Hello everyone and welcome to this session in which we will discuss estimated liabilities. Estimated liabilities is another category of liabilities that involve some level of uncertainty. As we discussed earlier, a liability is an obligation to pay, to pay something in the future. Typically, liabilities are characterized by three known components. One is the amount you are going to pay, when are you going to pay it, and for who or what's the purpose for it. For most liabilities, all these three components are clear. They are known. And if they are known, the liability is considered known liabilities. For example, if you take a loan from the bank, you know how much you have to pay back, when do you have to pay it, and to whom you're paying it. Estimated liabilities, on the other hand, arises when one or more of these components is uncertain. Most commonly, the amount. When the liability is known, but the exact amount is uncertain, what you have is an estimated liability. Example of estimated liabilities could include pension and healthcare obligations. For example, when your employee retire down the road 10 to 15 years, vacation pay, when, you, when your employees take vacation, you have to estimate that. It could be a warranty obligation that you have to estimate. But those are the things that we have to discuss in this session in order to explain what are estimated liabilities we will work them step by step and obviously we'll work journal entries to explain this concept. Let's go ahead and get started by looking at some of these estimated liabilities. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Starting with health and pension benefits. Employee earn these benefits while working. What does that mean? Let's assume you work for a company in the year 2028. You may retire in the year 2050. So you work all these years and at some point you are going to retire. What would that do? Well, here's what's going to happen. As you work for the company, as you work each year, the company will have to accrue expenses on your behalf. If they promise you pension, if they promise you payments year 2050, 2051, 2052, 2053 for the next 30 years, well, they have to start to account for this now. Also, if they offer you health insurance, same concept. So the employee earned this benefit while working, though the payout may occur decades later, such as 30 or 40 years down the road. So how do we, ask, how do we record this liability, this expense and this liability? You guessed it. We estimate. We estimate. So as employee work, companies must record these expenses now in real time, recognizing a long-term obligation they are accruing. Now, specifically in accounting, we have an area called pension liability. It's by itself, it's a very complicated area in accounting, but this is what we are discussing here. Not in this course, in intermediate accounting, we'll dive a little bit more into it, but that's the basic idea. For example, if an employer expects to contribute to a medical insurance plan incorporating a percentage of the employee gross salaries, the expense is recorded today, even if the payment is not made until the future. So you might be financing their health insurance 30 years 30 years later, you have to record the expense now. That's okay, you'll pay it later. Are you going to be accurate? 
well, you're, you're gonna try to be accurate. You will hire a consultant, you would hire an actuary, you will hire a specialist that will help you estimate the future healthcare cost, how long this employee would live, how many, how many years they work for you, so on and so forth. So let's take a look at a simple example. A company offers a pension plan and health insurance to its employees. The company estimates that it will contribute 5% of the employee gross salaries to the pension and health insurance. They believe a good number is 5% of their gross salaries is good enough to put away for the future. At the end of the year, the total gross salaries of all employees is half a million. Half a million times 5%, it means the company will have to record an expense of 25000 they would debit pension and health insurance 25. They will credit pension and health insurance payable. Now, let's assume they, they found a company that's willing to guarantee health and pension for these employees, and they have to pay this company. Therefore, they will credit cash. Here, what we're saying is book the liability, book the liability, and we'll pay it later. Now, when we pay it later, what's going to happen when we actually pay it later, when we pay the liability, whether it's next year or in five years from now, we will debit the liability and we credit cash. Notice we created a liability. Then we removed the liability when we paid it and the liability goes down to zero. As I, as I just mentioned earlier, this is one of the most complicated areas in accounting because you are looking into the future, you are looking 20, 30 years, and you are recording an expense now, a liability now, that the company is responsible for down the road. Another estimated liability is vacation benefits. Vacation benefit offer another interesting case. It's when the employee earns vacation time, they accrue a liability for the company, even if the vacation is taken the following year. Same concept. Let's assume you're in the year 2028, and you work very hard that year and you earned your vacation. You may not take your vacation until the year 2029. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to estimate your vacation expense because in 2029, your salary could be different from 2028. So the expense need to be recorded in 2028, the year that you worked, because the expense has to match the period. So the expense need to be re recorded in the same year the employee earns their earns their time, earns their time off. This way, financial statement accur accurately record their obligation. Let me take, let me get rid of this. Record their obligation. Let's take a look at an example. A company offers its employee vacation benefits where each employee earns one week of paid vacation for every year they service. So you work one year, you earn one week. At the end of the year, the company estimates that employee have earned $10,000 worth of vacation time. So for that year, the total employees earned 10,000 of vacation time. But this vacation will not be taken until the following year. It does not matter. Since they earned it this year, you record the expense this year. So this year, so 1231 this year, we debit an expense, credit a liability, thus creating a liability. Then when this employee takes the vacation later, the following year, we debit vacation payable, we credit cash, and remo we remove the liability. Now we are assuming that the vacation pay will be 10,000. Who knows, maybe these employees, their salary increased, and when, we, when they took the vacation, actually we need to pay them 12,000 because their salaries went up when they took vacation the following year. Therefore, we have an additional vacation expense of 2,000. No problem. That's why it's called what type of a liability? Estimated liability, because by the time the employee takes the vacation, they could have a different amount. But we did our best in estimating. Here we're assuming that their salary will stay the same to make it simple and illustrate the point. Bonus plan is another example of estimated liability. Companies often motivate their employees with bonuses. They would say, for example, if we earn above 100,000, you get 5%. If we, above, if we earn above 200,000, you would earn 7%, so on and so forth. So if a company predicts a profit, they will set aside a percentage as a bonus. For example, if the company profit for the year is estimated at 100,000, 10% might be earmarked as bonuses. So here's how it works. 
So the company ends, the year ends December 31st. And December 31st, at the end of the year, we have to pay the bonus. Okay. So December 31st, the company will have to make a decision how much to pay in bonus. Often time, not often time, always, the company don't know exactly how much they made at least a month, month and a half later until they finish the books, book all the accruals, so on and so forth. But by the end of the year, they have to estimate the profit. So here they're estimating it at 10,000, at 100,000. It means they have to set aside 10% or $10,000 in bonus. Why is this estimatable? Because by the time we, we have the financial statement finalized, the amount could be 103, the amount could be 98, could be something else. It could be 100,000. Nevertheless, it's an estimated amount. That's the, that's the point. So the bonuses, despite being paid in subsequent year, have to be recorded as an expense in that year before the financial statements are issued the following year. So for example, if we estimate at 10,000, we debit bonus expense, credit bonus payable. Then when we cut the check, assuming exactly the profit was 100,000, great. We debit the bonus, credit cash. Now we end up and the liability is gone. Now we end up paying more. We end up paying 12,000. Then we have to book an additional 2,000 of bonus expense, or we may end up paying only 8,000 and we would reverse the expense. Then we will credit expense of 2,000 because we have to remove the bonus payable of 10,000. Again, this is why we call those what type of liabilities? Estimated. Estimated means what? It means we are taking our best guess. Another classic example of estimated liabilities are warranties. That's, a, that's another classic one. When a product is sold with a warranty, companies must prepare for future repairs or replacement. So when the company sells a car or a refrigerator or a computer or a PS5 or whatever, so they sell it in the year 2028, but they offer a warranty in 2029 and 2030. So the next, the following two years. Now the sale took place in 2028, but the warranty may not take place until the subsequent year. Guess what? The sale plus the expense will have to be recorded in 2028 when the sale took place. What does that mean? It means you have to estimate this warranty expense. You have to estimate the warranty expense. Why? Because of the matching principle. If you made the sale in 2028, the expenses related to that sale, which is the warranty expense, will have to be recorded in the year 2028. So the expense must be recorded in the same period as the sale to accurately reflect good matching revenues with the associated expense. So for example, if a car sold in December includes a warranty, the company will estimate and record the related expense immediately, even if the actual repair happens few months later or few years later. Some car warranties goes up to three, five, six, seven years, but we record the expense in the year of the sale. So what happened when the company, when the customer comes back. Let's work an example to show you what happened. A company sell electronics devices with one year warranty based on historical data. The company estimate that 2% of the sales would result in the warranty claims. So assume the company made half a million dollar in sales. So half a million times 2%, they estimate warranty expense of $10,000. Therefore, they have to book warranty expense of 10000 and they will have to book warranty liability or warranty payable of 10,000. So what we did is we established a liability called warranty payable. Now let's assume some customers came back and they needed repair, they needed parts replaced. And let's assume for that year, 6,000, we provided 6,000 worth of repairs. When the customer comes back, we debit warranty liability. This is the subsequent year. This is to record the payment of warranty in the subsequent year because the warranty is only for one year, 6,000, and we credit cash 6,000. So we debit warranty payable 6,000. What's left is 4,000. Let's assume no one comes back. That's it. The year ended, the following year ended because this warranty is only for one year. And we still have 4,000 in warranty payable. What can we do? Let's assume we no longer need a warranty payable, for example, for other product 
we reverse this entry. We debit warranty payable for 4,000 to remove this payable and we credit we credit expense, we reduce expenses. That means we're gonna increase our revenue for that year, increase our profit because we reduced our expenses to remove the liability. Oftentimes this, not, this does not happen because the company will have warranties from other product where they went over. It means they estimated 10 and they incurred 12 or they incurred 14. So in certain liabilities, they spend more money than they expected and other, li and other warranties they, ex they spent less and they kind of they they cancel each other out at the end you're going to have either an over liability or under liability but usually you don't close it because it's a continuous thing continuous means the company keeps selling product they keep selling liabilities they keep that account open and they make the appropriate adjustment but warranty expense is another classic example oh, all these are classic the good they're good examples of what type of liabilities you, you guessed it, estimated liabilities. Now we still have to talk about another type of liabilities, which are contingent liabilities. We have estimated liabilities, we have certain liabilities, we have contingent liabilities, all sorts of liabilities. And liabilities are no good, right? Except unearned revenue, we talked about that. What should you do now? You wanna go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, exercises, that's gonna help you, especially if you are a financial accounting student, invest in yourself and stay safe.